Okay, I have a question for all of us. Are you ready? Is winning all about success? I am recently the retired coach of the UCLA women's gymnastics team, a position that I held for 29 years. I experienced a lot of winning. I led our team to seven national championships. I was included the National UCLA Athletic Hall of Fame. And I was even voted the coach of the century. Winning is like really, really fun. Are we sure that winning is all about success? Are we sure that success equals winning? The answer is no. In the end, not everything in life is about winning. For example, students are not going to be confident or motivated when people are supposed to trust. Like our own coaches are bringing us down. The pressure of winning has the power to literally make someone sick and tired of their own job, hobbies, and passions. Building trust is better than building a trophy case. Why winning doesn't always equal success by Valerie Cohor. But I'm here to share my insight. Winning does not always equal success. All across America and around the world, we have a crisis that we have created in our schools and our businesses and politics. Winning at all costs has become acceptable. As a society, we honor the people at the top of the pyramid. We also applaud those people who won championships and elections. But sadly, quite often, those same people are leaving their institutions damaged and broken. With awards and medals, athletes often leave their teams damaged emotionally and mentally, not just physically. We have become so hyper-focused on that end result. And when the end result is a win, the human component of how we get there often gets swept under the rug. And so does the damage. Stop calling for a time out. We need to redefine success. Real success is developing champions in life for our world. Win or lose. Not for your team. Not for your business. And not even for your Christmas card. Bragging rights. Sorry. So how do we do this? First of all, you may be able to dictate your way to a win, but you can't dictate your life in a success. Let me take you back to 1990, when I was first appointed the head coach of the UCLA women's gymnastics team. I knew nothing about how to develop a team culture. The best I could do was mimic other coaches who had won and so become tough talking, tough minded, unsympathetic, and oftentimes downright mean. I acted like a head coach who only thought was to figure out how to win. My last, my first few seasons as a head coach were abysmal. And after putting up with my brash coaching style for a couple of years, our team asked for a team meeting. Well, I love team meetings. So I said, yay, let's have a team meeting. Well, for two hours straight, they gave me examples how my ignorance was hurtful and demeaning. Yeah, not yay. They explained to me that they wanted to be supported, not belittled. They wanted to be coached up, not coached down. They wanted to be motivated not below. Being a dogmatic dictator may produce compliment, good title, but it doesn't develop champions in life. It is so much easier in any walk of life to dictate and give orders than to actually figure out how to motivate someone to want to be better. 
And the reason is libation takes a really long time to take root, but when it does, it is character building and life altering. I realized that I needed to fortify our student athletes as whole human beings, not just athletes who had won. So, so success for me changed. And instead of only focusing on winning, I learned to focus on developing my coaching skills and developing myself, which is developing champions in life through sport. And I knew if I did this well enough, that champion mentally would translate to the competition floor. And it did. The key ingredient way to develop peace and trust, respectful, honesty, and bravery. All of the ingredients that lead to tough love. Speaking of tough love, Kaylin Ohashi is a perfect example for this. You may have seen her floor team. It has over 150 million views. And the consensus is her performance is pure joy. However, when Caitlin came to UCLA her freshman year, she was broken in body, mind, and spirit. She had grown up in a stereotypical high-level athletic world, and she was damaged. So when Caitlin came to UCLA her freshman year, she found her inner rebel quite well. I will never forget a team meeting with halfway through her freshman season. We were in there with the team, the coaching staff, the support staff, sports psychologists, and Caitlin very clearly and unapologetically said, I just don't want to be great again. I felt like I got sucker punched in the face. My first thought was, now why the heck am I going to honor your scholarship? It was a really snarky thought. And thankfully, I didn't say it out loud because then I had clarity. Caitlin didn't hate gymnastics. Caitlin hated everything to associate with, her, with being great. Caitlin didn't want to be a winner. But everything about winning made her so happy. But the job was to figure out how to motivate her to want to be great again by helping her redefine success. My enthusiasm for that challenge turned into determin determination when one day Caitlin looked me in the eye and said, Miss Val, I just want you to know everything you tell me to do, I do the exact opposite. Yeah, Caitlin. Challenge accepted. Okay. So I embarked on the painfully slow process of building trust and proving to her that first and foremost, I cared about her as a whole human being. Part of my strategy was to only talk to Kaylin about gymnastics at the gym. But outside of gym, we talked about everything else school, friends, hobbies. I encouraged her to find things outside of her sport that brought her joy. And it was so cool to see process of Caitlin Ohashi literally blossom before her eyes. And through the process, she rediscovered her self-love and self-worth. She was able to bring that joy back to her gymnastics. She went to earn the N. CAA title on floor. So let's think about Kayla Nohashi in your life. Let's think about those people under your care and your guidance. What are you telling your kids on the car ride home? Are you focusing on the end result or are you excited to use that time to help your child develop into a champion? It's very simple. You know how you're focusing on the end result if you ask questions about the end result. Did you win? How many points did you score? Did you get an A? If you truly are motivated about helping your child develop into a champion, you will ask questions about the experience and the process. Like, what did you learn today? 
or did you help a teammate? Did you figure out how to be a fun at working hard? And then the key is to be very still and listen to the response. As parents, as coaches, as leaders, we can no longer lead from a place where winning is our only metric of success, where our ego sits center stage. Because it has been proven that the process produces broken human beings. And I empathetically know that it is absolutely possible to produce and train champions in life in every single walk of life without compromising the human spirit. It starts with defining success for yourself and those under your care, and then constantly self-examining whether your actions are in alignment with your goals. We are all coaches in some capacity. We all have a collective responsibility to develop champions and life for our whole world. That it was real success looks like. And in the world of athletes, that is what we call a win-win.